As the I love to tell my students, we lawyers are the most prayerful of all the professionals. Because in every pleading we submit, there is always a prayer. Ano po? But there is a prayer written by a lawyer himself who later on became a saint. Pwede pala yun, yung abogado nagiging santo. Ay, pwede naman ho. <laughs> Medyo may hirap-hirap lang. Sabi nga ni Justice Leonin kanina, eh, honesty. Ayan. Sabi niya, sabi ni Thomas Moore, actually is the patron saint of the lawyers. No? Lord, grant that I may be able in argument, accurate in analysis, strict and study, candid with clients, and honest with adversaries. So as I love to tell my students, lawyers are the most honest, the most truthful, and the most faithful of all the professionals. Why? Nakalagay ho yun dun sa ating lawyers out at CPR. Diba? Kaya lang, nowadays, parang sabi nga ni Billy Joel, honesty is such a lonely word. Ayan. Wala na daw hong tapat ngayon, eh. parang tanghali na lang ang tapat. <laughs> Sit with me at my desk and listen with me to my client's plans. Read with me in my library and stand beside me in court so that today, I shall not, in order to win a point, lose my soul. So in this day and age, alam mo natin ang problema, that's why we might be concerned about our soul naman daw. In the Gospel of Mark chapter 8 verse 36, For what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? For what would a man give in exchange for his soul? That is if you believe you have a soul. Because if you don't, that is immaterial. According to Margaret Thatcher, it is not the creation of wealth that is wrong. What is wrong therefore? It is man's love of money for its own sake. So probably she took that from the wordings of Paul in his first letter to Timothy chapter 6 verse 10. Sabi niya, for the love of money is the root of all kinds of evils. It's not money, but man's love for money. That's why itong quarantine period, I realized mas madali yatang umaman yung preacher kaya sa lawyer. Ano po? That's why I was thinking na magtayo na rin ang relihiyon. Natawagin na natin saksi ni Lupa. But don't worry, biro lang ho yan. Hindi ko kayo aakitin. <laughs> Ayan. So as... Uh, Para ho maiba, kasi according to the experts, if you are looking at your screen for a, an extended period of time, you'll suffer from screen fatigue. So just to test kung hindi pa ho kayo napapagod, you focus your attention into the picture, particularly the yellow dot in some screens that appears to be white, on the nose of that woman. About five hours. Ay, hindi ho. <laughs> Sandali lang tayo rito. Five seconds. Then after that, you look at the white portion and try to see what's in there. Don't worry, hindi nakakatakot siya. Ayan. So if you can see what I can see, then nagkakitaan na tayo. No? So ito yung mga panahon na wala pang instant pictures, eh. i-dinedevelop pa yung negative. So what does it mean? Wala lang. Big ba sabihin lang talaga may kahulugan? Hindi ho. So it means sometimes things are not what they appear to be. Ba? So, sometimes you have to make a second look. Katulad doon ito, no? So, wala akong kinalaman sa topic natin yan. Para magkamuka lang daw. Okay? So, kala mo yun eh, pero wala pa lang kayo. <laughs> At sa ito, may minimintay doon tayong YouTube channel. You can always go that. Kung gusto nyo ng mga ganyang uh, discussion. And sabi natin, resilient educator, what is education? Uh, practically, education is derived from the Latin word educo or educatio, which means to lead forth. In the book that you could see, uh, published in 1997, education is defined as the process of acquiring knowledge, habits, attitudes, interests, skills, abilities, and other intangible human qualities through training, instruction, and self-activity. And you have to transmit that to uh, posterity. Now, one uh, English writer said that education does not mean teaching people what they do not know. It means teaching them to behave as they do not behave. That is our common goal, Tiuba. That's why we are educating people, particularly in the field of legal education. And no less than the Constitution, alam ko, sawan-sawa na kayo pagdating sa mga batas eh. But I would advise my audience na kung gusto nyo ng matinong relasyon, boyfriend man yan, asawa o girlfriend, dumana po kayo ng abogado, matino ang relasyon dyan. Eh bakit? Eh yung batas nga, inuunawa, ikaw pa kaya. 
Yung iba nga ipinaglalaban, ikaw pa ba? <laughs> okay. So it is the duty of the state to protect and promote the rights of all citizens to quality education. Quality education has been a cliche. The question is, how do you quantify quality education? Napakahirap pong i-gauge minsan yung quality education. Now, one American president said that education is a privilege. It is not a right. Ay, mali, mali. It's, a pri it's not a privilege. It is a right. That's why the Constitution, no less than the Constitution, provides for free quality education at all levels. Ano po? Now, under our Constitution, the following are our national educational goals. So meaning to say, after completing all the levels of schooling in the Philippines, a student is expected to show nationalism, patriotism, foster love of humanity, etc. So lahat to yung kailangan niyang gawin. But the problem is, it seems that the contrary is happening. Why? If our educational system had been successful, wala ko sigurong taong nakakulong ngayon. Kasi one of the national educational goals is strengthen ethical and spiritual values. Develop moral character and personal discipline. According to St. Thomas Aquinas, the first rule of morality is do what is good, avoid what is evil. At uh, nandito ba si Dean Milano ng Aquinas? Ah, UST Legaspi na pala ito. Ayan. Yan sabi ni Thomas Aquinas, the first rule of morality is do what is good, avoid what is evil. Eh kung ginagawa ko ito, wala nang go, uh, ro role ang mga lawyers katulad natin. You know? But the problem is not everyone is doing this. Kasi nga, mas madali hong gawin yata yung mali kaysa sa tama. Now, our goal is the, to give holistic education to everyone. The goal of holistic education is to cultivate and a developing child's physical, emotional, moral, psychological, and spiritual attributes. Okay? Serving the whole child means providing opportunities that are personalized to a child's skills and feelings. Now, an American educator by the name of Samuel Blo uh, Benjamin Samuel Bloom, known for his Bloom's taxonomy of educational objectives, identified the different domains of learning. Ito yung cognitive, the development of the brain, affective, the development of the heart, sabi nila, and psychomotor, the development of the hands, manipulative. So these are the mode of learnings, thinking, memorizing, etc. So after being educated into all the levels of our educational system, a child should develop all of this. Now, one American educator by the name of John Dewey Sabi niya, give the pupil something to do, not something to learn. And the doing is of such nature as to demand thinking. Learning naturally results. And learning will not take place in the absence of a teacher. So sino po ang teacher? It has been a common definition that a teacher is one who causes others to learn new things. So anyone can be a teacher if you are causing somebody to learn. And according to Albert Einstein, although ito ay pure hearsay, di ko siya narinig na sinabi niya ito. <laughs> Joke lang. I never teach my pupils. I only provide the condition in which they can learn. So as teachers, as educators, all of us are educators, I believe. If you are a teacher, you are also a life coach, a motivator, Discovery Guide, we play so many different roles in the lives of our students. That is why teaching is the profession that creates all other professions. Okay? There can be no lawyers like us if there were no teachers. And according to Aristotle, teaching is the highest form of understanding because you cannot teach what you do not know. You cannot give what you do not have. So if you are teaching, it presupposes that you know something that your students do not know. Or probably they do not understand. That is why it is our duty to make them understand. Okay? 
According to a Swiss psychiatrist, itong si Carl Jung, one looks back with appreciation to the brilliant teachers, but with gratitude to those who touch our human feelings. The curriculum is so much necessary raw material, but warmth is the vital element for the growing plant and for the soul of the child. Importante ho yung human touch. That's why an American motivational writer once said, ito hong si William Arthur Ward, the mediocre teacher tells. The good teacher explains. The superior teacher demonstrates. But the great teacher inspires. How many of our students have been inspired by us? Of course, we were also inspired by the great teachers that we had in the past. Ako, one of the reasons why I concentrated on labor law is that my professor in labor law in the law school was so good. Pati ko gusto ko siyang gayahin. Fortunately, uh, wala na po siya ngayon. <laughs> Kinuha na ni Lord. Now, in the Bible, sabi ho dun sa Gospel of Luke, chapter 6, verse 40, a disciple is not above his teacher. But everyone is perfectly trained will be like his teacher. Okay? But, sabi naman ni James Garfield, the former president of the US na na-assassinate to ito, kaya namatay. A good teacher on one end of a lag and an interesting pupil on the other will make a university anywhere. We're very lucky because we have this technology right now. You can just imagine if this pandemic happened decades ago, how could we push through with our educational activities? Kaya lang ko ngayon, we have to bear with our internet connection. No? Sabi ko nga sa mga estudyante ko, pasensya na ang internet connection sa Pilipinas para mga jowa nyo lang. Andalas naglolo ko. Okay? So, but as teachers, we must also be concerned about our mental health. Kasi ho, itong remote learning mode na ito, whether we like it or not, brings difficulties. Brings obstacles to all of us. Not only to the students, but more so to the teachers. Okay? So what can we do to become resilient educators in the midst of this pandemic? Number one, control the things that you can. We have to admit that we cannot control everything right now. There are certain things that you simply cannot control, like the rising number of COVID uh, cases. Yun natin kayang kontrolin ito eh. Although napipredik yata ng isang, ng isang uh, research group, ano, tawagin natin OCTA. <laughs> Sinabi lang 10,000, nagiging 10,000 nga. But there are some things that you can control. What can you control? How you spend some of your time? You consume much of your time uh, browsing your Facebook account, your Twitter, or something like that. What you choose to prioritize, what types of media you consume, and how frequently, and of course, your mindset. So by focusing on the things that you can control and prioritizing the ones that are healthy, you can help put your mental wellness in the right track. That's why I think one of the uh, advice given by Justice Leonen in his social media is to avoid social media. Yan yung nabasa ko doon sa kanyang Twitter. Ano po? <laughs> Nusundan ko yung kanyang Twitter. Now, according to Barbara DeAngelis, an American relationship consultant, no one is in control of your happiness but you. Diba? Therefore, you have the power to change anything about yourself or your life that you want to change. Nasa atin po yun. According to Walter Anderson, I am responsible. Although I may not be able to prevent the worst from happening, I am responsible for my attitude toward the inevitable. Misfortunes that darken life. There's always a choice that you can make. Okay? So next, carve out time for yourself. Now more than ever, we are actually focused on remote teaching, physical health and preventing illness, washing hands, etc. Yung mga IATF, ho, no? Uh, binila, ano, bang, ano bang problema sa IATF? Yung definition daw ho. Eh. 
kasi daw yung IATF, ano nga ba ibig sabihin yan? It's all their fault. Ah, hindi ho, hindi ho. Interagency Task Force on whatever. Okay. So marami yung mga rules na ini-impose. But it is just as important for maintaining mental health. To try to carve out some time. To prioritize the other things that help us feel balanced. Pag kong kalimutan nyo mag-exercise, a ah, cliche na ho ito, ulit-ulit ang sinasabi. Exercise for others, it's reading, journaling, meditation, or spending some time doing a hobby. During the pandemic, I learned to create a YouTube channel. <laughs> During the pandemic, I was able to publish a book on Constitutional Law 1 and revised uh, public international law. So there are things that we can focus our, our attention and if you are someone who isn't sure what you can do for your self-care, simply the act of doing something can help maintain your mental health. Okay? Why? And then, uh, sabi ko ng isang unknown writer, an empty lantern provides no light. Self-care is the fuel that allows your light to shine brightly. Right? For the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. The next thing is get your body moving. One of the biggest challenges for many educators during this time is how hard it is to be sedentary. No? Lakaupo lang ho tayo maghapon. And the damang-dama ko ho yan kapag ka may mga bar review lectures, you are seated for almost eight hours lecturing in front of your um, laptop or your screen. No, uh, you, you don't even know and you are not even sure if there are people listening to you. Ba? Kasi mga naka-avatar lang sila, naka-pictures picture, lang. So you may be used to moving around, physical transitions from one room to another. Uh, when we are teaching physically, we can walk, go to different parts of the room, but right now we cannot do that. So what do we do? As you work around your schedule, set a timer or create breaks for your specifically to move around. This might uh, mean moving around your house or taking a walk around your building or neighborhood. Obeying physical distancing recommendations, of course, by the IATF. You can go out of your house, go to your garden. Diba? Anything to get your body moving will help maintain your mental wellness. Sometimes if I'm attending a webinar like this, I will get up. You, uh, you have to stand up and do something. But still, listening. Ano po? Why? Lack of activity destroys the good condition of every human being. While movement and methodical physical exercise save it and preserve it. Yeah. The next thing that we have to remember is model self-compassion. Now, more than ever, we need to be incredibly kind to ourselves to help maintain mental wellness. We teach our students, we advise clients the basic of self-compassion, kind self-talk, and growth mindset. But now is the time to also turn inwards. Minsan, no, magpagbigay tayo ng magandang advice sa ibang tao, pero pag tayo na nangangailangan ng advice, kanino tayo hingi ng advice? Right? So in so doing, you'll benefit your own mental wellness, and also be able to model it for others in your life. Kasi ho, marami ang umaasa sa atin at marami ang dependent sa atin. And, sabi dyan, love your neighbor as you love yourself. Diba? So, ito ho yung self-care. Eh. Because love will start with you and you cannot share it unless you have it with you. So, According to Kelly McGonigal, self-compassion, being supportive and kind to yourself, especially in the face of stress and failure, is associated with more motivation and better self-control. Self-introspection is a good exercise today. No? So look at yourself and love yourself. It is the greatest love of all. <laughs> Now, set reasonable expectations. Alam nyo, minsan, um, nakaka-prostrate kapag ka online class, a student is reciting, bigla na lang nawawala. 
or at the time na magre-recite na siya, nawawala na siya. I do not know kung talagang may problema o gawa-gawa ito, but we have to accept the reality that we cannot control this. So collectively, we need to acknowledge that we are in the midst of a pandemic and distance learning. And that is not business unusual. Uh, not business as usual. They cannot do the things that we used to do. Things are going to be different. And that is okay. We have to accept the fact that it is now the reality. That it is quite impossible nowadays to go back in the way we used to do things. We can't expect to be as productive or on top of it or together as once we could. Tingnan ko yung mga Christmas party, di ba? This is one of the reasons why nagkaroon tayo ng, sabi nila, third wave na. Because of mass gathering. Because of our desire to be with our friends, relatives during the holidays. Now, if you are one of those, like many, who is trying to balance educating with care at taking or educating your students on top of your own kids, there's no possible way that you can be all things to all people of, at all time. Isa-isa lang ho. Nag-isa lang kayo eh. So what do we do? Setting small, realistic expectations around you. What you actually could be capable of, you'll be setting yourself up to feel much more fulfilled and help maintain your mental health. Reasonable expectations. Why? Sabi ni Shakespeare, expectation is the root of all heartaches. Di ba? Kala mo kayo na, pero wala pa lang kayo. Kaya ka nasaktan. That's why sabi ni Maya Angelo, never make someone a priority when all you are to him or to them is an option. Ako, sa buhay ko, I just prioritize people. Na priority rin ako. Why? Eh kasi pag hindi ka niya priority at priority mo siya, masasaktan ka lang eh. Ha? Sabi ko sa mga estudyante ko at sa mga audience natin, minsan, iwasan niyo yung mga tao na ang tingin sa inyo ay parang hagdanan. Bakit? Eh napapansin ka lang pag hindi available yung elevator. Iwasan niyo rin ho yung mga parang Ferris wheel lang ang dating. Ano po? Kala mo pinapasaya ka. Yung pala pinapaikot-ikot ka lang. <laughs> At lalo hong iuwasan yung parang mga buwan lang ang dating. Bakit buwan? Nasamahan ka sa gabi, pero iiwan ka rin yan pagdating ng araw. Okay? So kaya daw ho nasasaktan, nakita ko lang ito sa Google. Dahil daw sa maling tao, maling panahon, maling akala, at maling pag-ibig. For all their uh, deficiencies, sabi ko, tama minsan yung mga polis eh. Sabi ng mga polis, sumuko ka na para hindi ka na masaktan. Kasi pag hindi ka susuko, patuloy kang masasaktan. And communication is vital. You cannot do it on your own. We have to admit that. So let people know what is going on. Especially your colleagues, your supervisors. That's why it's very helpful ho, na meron tayong mga group chat sa Facebook or sa Viber. So that we can communicate. By being transparent about what you are experiencing and with what things may be helpful, you can bring them in and potentially expand your own network of resources and support because you cannot live alone. We are gregarious beings. We need each other. You may also be modeling healthy communication for other colleagues to follow suit. Don't bear it by your own. Okay? And make sure that if the, the message that you sent is the same as the message received that you intended. Diba? Why? Miscommunication and misunderstanding are the roots of much conflict. Therefore, you have to use clear and specific language. Nakita ko lang ho ito sa internet, ano? Na sa Ilocano, ang magaganda ang pangalan ng mga pagkain. Pero pag sinabi mo yun sa Tagalog, ay magkakaproblema ho tayo. But there's nothing wrong if you are an Ilocano. <laughs> so, and sometimes you have to use humor. That's why in my classes, I mean again, I have to inject humor para ho hindi boring. Ano? Ayan. And then my suggestion, no, 
na after one hour of uh, synchronous class, you have to give them a break. Ako, after one hour, one hour and a half, I would usually declare a five to ten minute break para makapag, uh, makatayo naman sila, makapag uh, move around, etc. And also, to give good vibes daw, you use humor. But yung humor ho ay bawal na kasi yung mga green jokes ngayon because of Republic Act 11313. Ano po? Yung Safe Spaces Act. <laughs> Now, way back 2014, there was a survey conducted by Social Weather Weather Station. I mean, Social Weather Station. Eh? Ito yung survey, no? In time for the Valentine's Day in 2014. A survey released by Social Weather Station in the time for Valentine's Day reveals that almost all Filipino adults, 90% of those who were surveyed, prefer a person with good sense of humor daw, even if he is unattractive. Hala, delikado. <laughs> so another thing that we have to consider is to have a dedicated working space. Look at the picture. Pagkaganyan, no, source of stress yan. Eh. Well, habang maating ka ng webinar, you are holding your uh, online class, Maraming distractions around you. So this is a psychological trick that helps you to be both uh, to both be more productive and to disconnect from work more easily. When working from home, we can quickly fall into an unhealthy balance between work and life. Especially if you are working in the areas of your home in which you are also living. So, kaya lang ho, our students may not have the same um, privilege of having their own working or studying space. But for us educators, probably we have to spend the extra just to have your own working space. Okay? By creating a dedicated workspace, even if it is just one corner of your home that you designate as work only, You can do two things. One, you can send an outward message to those in your life that when you are on that space, you are working. That signals to them that you cannot be disturbed. And also an internal message to your own brain that signals when it is work mode and when it is time to disconnect. So meron hong delineation. Ha? Kasi pagka walang delineation yung work at yung iyong buhay, ay may mong problema ho tayo. Okay? Ang sabi yun itong si Angela, uh, si Celia, uh -huh. my box bedroom can only fit a bed and a wardrobe. But it was my whole world. My only personal space to think and dream. To cry and laugh and wait until I became old enough to do all the things I wasn't able to do. Okay? So meron hong uh, space for every activity. And set hours for remote teaching. Of course, may mga schedules so tayo, no? By controlling and identifying specific times in which students or colleagues can reach, you'll be able to both set boundaries while remote teaching and will also provide a designated time in which students know that they can reach you during distance learning. Ako, pagdating ng 10 o'clock, naka-off na yung cellphone ko at ang social media. Hanggang 10 lang. Kasi ang klase naman natatapos ng 9, but I have a class na natatapos ng 10 or 10.30. So after that, wala na ho. You cannot contact me anymore. Bukas na yan. Why? That is for your own good. Kasi pag wala hong limit yung ating oras, ama mo problema kayo dyan, especially your mental health. Now even the Old Testament of the Bible, ang sabi ho nung isang kilalang hari, ano? it is attributed to King Solomon. Ecclesiastes chapter 1 verse 1 to 8, For everything there is a season and a time for every activity under heaven. So kung yung hari may kanya-kanyang time, eh tayo dapat meron din. Okay? Finally, reach out. If you feel like you are having tough time, are struggling in any way in, with enjoying things, balancing your mood, or finding time to take care of yourself, or if you have any thoughts of hurting your... Naku, delikado yan, eh? 
If you have thoughts about hurting yourself, please reach out to a counselor. Okay? Kaya lang may makilala ko tayong counselor, sila mismo ang may problema eh. <laughs> What we are experiencing right now is hard. And trained professionals across the globe continue to mobilize to serve as frontliners, responders for our minds in the same ways doctors have for our bodies during COVID-19 pandemic. So we have to reach out. Sabi yun ng isang English poet, ito hong si John Don, no man is an island. Pagkahaba-haba pala nito. No? Pero ang naalala lang ho natin that no man is an island. Okay? It might also help us If we consider in our remote teaching or online classes, these tips from resilienteducator.com, five common teaching styles na pwede ho natin gamitin in our classes. According to Bertrand Russell, more important than the curriculum is the question of the methods of teaching. In the spirit in which teaching is given. Okay, so what are these suggested styles of teaching? One, the authority, also known as the lecture style. The authority model is teacher-centered and frequently entails lengthy lecture session or one-way presentation. So ito from the teacher to the student. Yeah, one way lang siya. Students are expected to take notes or absorb. Information. Now, there are pros and cons nito. No? Nahin natin yung pros. This style is acceptable for certain higher education disciplines and auditorium settings with large groups of students. So, particularly ho, doon sa mga bar review sessions. Dahil, alam naman natin, lahat tayo dumaan dyan sa bar review, talagang matagal ho ang session dyan. That's the reason why sometimes during the lecture, you have to inject you more or you have to tell story, or just to wake them up. Kasi yung nakakatulog yan. Now, ano naman ang konso nito? It is a questionable model for teaching young learners. Of course, we have that uh, luxury of teaching not so young learners. Ano po? <laughs> Kaya pwede natin gamitin ito. This is suitable approach or style for matured and responsible learners. Okay? Well, very well suited to law schools. Sabi yun itong si Confucius, I hear and I forget. I see and I remember. I do, I understand. Right? So ngayon, the demonstrator, also known as coach style. Marami na mga bar review centers ang ginagamit ito, no? yung coaching. This uh, retains the formal authority by role by showing students what they need to, do, uh, to know. The demonstrator is a lot like the lecturer. But their lessons include multimedia presentations. So nowadays, so, kapag ka wala tayong multimedia presentation, uh, yung ating studyante, even the audience, before you know it, have already fallen asleep. So kailangan may nakikita ho sila. Now, ano naman ang pros nito? This style gives teachers opportunities to incorporate a variety of formats, including lectures and multimedia presentations. In online learning, it's very important to have your multimedia presentation. Although it's well suited for teaching mathematics, daw ano po music education, etc., etc., difficult to accommodate students' individual needs in a larger classroom. But now it is quite important that you have this multimedia aids. According to Robert John Meehan, American educator, every child has a different learning style and pace. Each child is unique, not only capable of learning, but also capable of succeeding. Everyone is a potential. That's why dito lumabas yung teorya nitong si Howard Gardner. This is a book included in my collection of books. Howard Gardner identified nine. Nine nga ba itong kasama yung naturalistic? So nine, no? Existential yung pang siyam. Types of intelligences, which according to him, may not be possessed by uh, an individual child. No? Hindi lahat. Meron yan. So sabi niya, the biggest mistake of past centuries in teaching has been to treat all students as if they were variants. Parang COVID, ano? Of the same individual and thus to feel justified in teaching them 
all the same subjects the same way. That's why we have to adapt our method of teaching to different types of learners. Kasi oh, kahit na mga law students yan, iba-iba pa rin ang kanilang mga persuasion. That's why we can get an advice from this case of Bex versus San Diego. Ano ba sabi ng Korte Suprema speaking through Justice Isagane Cruz? A person cannot insist on being a physician if he will be a menace to his patients. If one who wants to be a lawyer may prove better as a plumber, he should be so advised and advised. Of course, he cannot be forced to be a plumber, but on the other hand, he may not be forced, he may not force his entry into the bar. Right? Ito ang palagi kong iniinsi sa mga estudyante ko on the first day of class. Is lawyering really for you? Because you might just be forcing yourself to be a lawyer and there comes the difficulty. Mahirap ang pilitin pag ayaw. Why? We cannot have a society of square pegs and round holes. Of dentists who should have never left the farm. Of engineers who should have studied banking and teachers who could be better as merchants. <laughs> so kung ikaw ay nasa law school pero hindi talaga para sa'yo, abang mag-isip-isip ka. That is always my advice to my students in the different law schools that I've been teaching. Now, we also have the facilitator or activity style. Facilitators promote self-learning and help students develop critical thinking skills and retain knowledge that leads to self-actualization. You know, ang gusto natin. Ha? Para ma-realize nila, ano talaga sila, para saan sila. This style trains students to ask questions. Sad to say, in the past, there were professors na na-experience natin pare-pareho, no? That if you ask question, ibabalik lang sa'yo yung tanong. Ikaw na sumagot niyan. <laughs> Pero <laughs> hindi daw po pwede dito yan. It's ideal for teaching science similar subjects. Now, what about the cons? Challenges to teacher to interact with students and prompt them toward discovery rather than lecturing facts and testing knowledge through memorization. So it's a bit harder to measure success in tangible terms. Kasi nga, we consider individual differences. That's one of the researches made by this man, Carter Good. Sabi niya, the variation or deviation among individual is regard to a single characteristic or number of characteristics, those differences in which their totality distinguish one individual from the other. No two individuals are exactly the same. What? Kaya po ang sabi daw ni Einstein, everybody is a genius. But if you judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree, it will live its whole life believing that it is stupid. Why? Hindi para sa kanya yun eh. Kaya babalik tayo dun sa multiple intelligences ni Howard Gardner. Ba? According to Jane Goodall, every individual matters. Every individual has a role to play. Kasi sa mga estudyante ko, baka naman hindi talaga para sa inyo lawyering at napipilitan lang kayo, still early for you to rethink of your options. Every individual makes a difference. Baka naman, you can make a difference in another field, not necessarily in the field of law. Now, the delegator. Ito naman, group style ang teaching nito. This best suited for curricula that require lab activities, laboratory activities, ano po? Such as chemistry, biology, and the like. Or subjects that warrant peer feedback, like debate and creative writing. Therefore, we can also use this in our law school classrooms. The advantages, guided discovery in inquiry-based learning, place the teacher in an observer role that inspires students by working in tandem toward common goals. What about the cons? Considered a modern style of teaching, it is sometimes criticized as eroding teacher authority. Kaya si teacher ay delegator, lahat na lang ipinasa niya sa estudyante, wala na siyang ginawa. Yan ho yung reporting style daw. So as a delegator, the teacher acts more as a consultant rather than the traditional authority figure. But still, children must be taught how to think, not what to think. Especially in the field of law. 
Now, according to Maria Montessori, kilalang kilala ho natin ito, di ba? Maria Montessori was basically a physician. She specialized on children with mental difficulty learning. Meron pong, ang tawag kasi dati, eh, mental defects ngayon, hindi na. Mentally challenged. That's the, I think, the politically correct term. Okay? So, in her practice of her profession as a doctor, she devised a way for these children with special needs to learn. And that's why we call it today the Montessori style of teaching. So according to Maria Montessori, although hindi ulat ng Montessori, mag-ingat kayo. Ha? Maraming Montessori, pero yun pala munting sari-sari at hindi Montessori. Ano? Do not tell them how to do it. Show them how to do it and do not say a word. If you tell them, they will watch your lips move. If you show them, they will want to do it themselves. Especially learners nowadays. Mas gusto nila yung hands-on sila. And according to a German educator, ito po ay credited for establishing the first kindergarten in the world. Yung kindergarten, German term na ibig sabihin, Garden of Children. Itong si Wilhelm August Frederick Probel. Children are like tiny flowers. They are varied and need care. But each is beautiful alone and glorious when seen in the community of peers. So we cannot always compare one child with another child. Right? Now, meron naman ng hybrid na tinatawag, also called blended style. Follows an integrated approach to teaching that blends the teacher's personality and interests with students' needs and curriculum appropriate methods. So anong advantages niya? Inclusive. Everybody can participate. It enables teachers to tailor their style to student needs and appropriate subject matter. Okay? Hybrid, however, runs the risk of trying to, to be too many things to all the students, prompting teachers to spread themselves too thin and dilute learning. Si parang all around na si teacher. Ano? Now, according to an American author, teachers have three loves. The love of learning, love of learners, but please do not love literally. Ah. Delikado ko tayo dyan. And the love of bringing the first two together. And according to Benjamin Franklin, experience is the best teacher. But a fool will learn from no other. But I used to joke with my students, para sa akin sabi ko, Teacher is the best experience. <laughs> okay. Ito yung mga books natin na available sa Rex Bookstore. Baka gusto nyong tingnan. Ayan po. Pwede naman yata kayo makahingi ng complimentary copies niyan para sa, for your uh, classes sa Rex Bookstore. Ano po? Ayan. Then there are other books na hindi law related. Kunti lang naman o ito. Ayan. And... Sabi ko sa mga estudyante ko, if you want to be a teacher or a lawyer, you have to use your mouth to earn a living. If you want to use other people's mouth to earn a living, don't be a lawyer, don't be a teacher. Be a dentist instead. With all due respect to the dentist. But more important than talking is listening. Take a look at the word high. Remove letter T, you have the word here. You remove letter H, you have the word ear. So in the middle of the word heart is the word ear. And if you try to cut both your ears, but please do not do this at home, you put them together, you'll form a heart-shaped object. So what does it mean? Our ears are the gateways to our heart. You'll never know how to love unless you know how to listen. So listening is the starting point of loving. And that's the reason why God Give me you. Hindi ho. God gave us two ears and only one tongue so that we can listen twice as much as we talk. Ayan po. At again, thank you for listening. You can go to that YouTube channel. Lalo yung mga barista, pinapunta ko dyan. May mga lectures po tayo dyan. Thank you for the opportunity to be with you this afternoon and for the chance to meet the different deans of the colleges of law in the country.